Welcome. I'm Michael Gaucher, and I'm creating a .NET program using C Sharp, WPF, and all of that's going to access a SQL Server database, all of which is running on a low-end computer that has an Intel quad-core Pentium processor with four gigabytes of RAM and a Samsung SSD. The great thing about this environment is that it allows us to prove or disprove in our own practical experience if you can do software development in a low-end computer environment and how well does that work in practice, what are the limitations and what are the possibilities. We have achieved our first major step in creating a RSS reader program, right? So that first major step is to get data linked to the, the user interface. As mentioned a couple of videos ago, that our approach here is to let the data from the database drive the user interface, right? And that's going to be the key to success. And in that way, we allow the data that we're trying to access to um, uh, flow into the program in a way where we're not working against the data, we're actually working with the data to more smoothly and harmoniously achieve what we, uh, what we seek. An RSS feed is a website, and I've chosen to represent each website as a tab. So I want tabs along the top, I want tabs along the top, and that's my first objective with data binding. And then my second objective with data binding is when a certain tab, when a given tab is clicked, that the all the feed uh, headlines for that website then shows up in a list box or some kind of list structure, I, I, it doesn't even matter, but I chose list box in this case. And then when you tap on and click on the feed item, right, when you tap on that headline, then the actual detailed information for that headline, the actual article, is shown on the screen. That's it. And so, now that we have a rhythm going in our code for getting data out of the database and getting that married to the screen, then we are going to build on that success to get the other data elements, the headlines and the article content just mentioned. And so I'm gonna use item source on the list box so that I can achieve automatic data binding in that instance. I went a more granular route with the tabs themselves, and I decided to go uh, a more automatic route with the headlines. And then when it comes to the article content, um, that is going to be um, a matter of just feeding in the appropriate article content uh, in the appropriate way so that it shows on the screen. Declaring the variables that will define the screen in its finality is very straightforward. So we want to show on the screen the name of the feed. And so that is shown in the tabs, but I also want to show that on the right hand, upper right hand side of the screen. And the headline that was selected. So yes, when you select the headline, um, it's obvious which headline you have selected, but I also want to have a larger description uh, showing that headline also on the right hand of the screen. And then, of course, the article content will come after those two items. Now I am putting these items into the visual tree so that they get rendered on the screen. And the reader fee detail is going to be the section of the screen that will hold these three items, feed name, headline, and article the article content. So I'm going to um, press a keystroke here, control K, control D to format the code real quick and uh, move on to setting up the event handler for the tabs. So when the tab is clicked, it's going to show the list of headlines that goes with that tab. So on line 71, that's what that is. That's the actual event function that's wired up to the RSS reader tab. Let's run the program and see where we are in terms of the 
the code quality do have an error a null reference exception and so that line I just deleted it was prematurely declared and so that line can go somewhere else the the readers the reader underscore tabs that is the uh, code that um, that line referred to so that was the reason for the null reference exception and then let's take a break to add the code to git because every once in a while you want to make sure you're you if you have a good milestone on your changes you put those in git and of course i want to check that in the git repository i have online at github.com slash michael gauche so here i have the tab and i want to make sure that uh, this tab's content is a list box right no need to add anything else just have a list box and then this list box is going to later on be defined in such a way where it knows where in the data uh, that's linked to it uh, where where its actual data values are uh, that it should list out and then here at the top of the class I'm going to cache the feed articles so that I have easy access to them and I don't have to make uh, multiple trips to the database so we're, we're at a point now where we can uh, try to um, make the feeds work a little bit better for us the the feeds was the was previously declared locally but I decided to make that global and that will simplify access to the feeds as well and I'm going to use the same type that I used for that uh, in the uh, data exchange class I'm going to use that for the feeds variable and so all I have to do is just copy and paste that definition and then we can uh, set that to null because in the constructor for the main window by way of the uh, initialized window event handler we're able to uh, create an in create the proper uh, instance or object reference um, on line 40 49 so that's what we have established so far and then feed articles will go along with that because I want to cache that as well um, we have the variable definition we have the uh, the, the declaration at the um, at the class level and then here we're going to uh, define that on uh, line 50 and so that's going to take care of feed articles and we're going to use our factory method here to get back the data and assign it um, to that variable reference on line 50. So let's take a, a quick look over our handiwork here. Um, there are no syn syntax errors so far. Um, I do want to make some small naming changes. That's uh, par for the course when you're um, writing writing code and writing this much code so let's make sure we use our refactorings to um, synchronize the names um, to everything that referenced the previous uh, version of the name the objective now is to update the event handler for when a tab is selected so I'm putting in the structure so that when the feed is selected, when the tab is selected, then that is fed in that the feed, the event handler referenced that feed name and the, the selected index so that it knows which feed it is dealing with. And then it, it can access that feeds variable and that feeds article variable that's declared at the class level to obtain the, the appropriate data that it needs in order to um, update the rest of the user interface. So this function that's defined between lines 76 and 97 is absolutely crucial for making the entire operation flow. So let's run this program and let's see um, what we what we get. Uh, let's build it first and then we'll run it at some point to see what our uh, result is. So I did control shift B. There are no errors at this time no syntactical or technical errors but I need to go to the documentation to see what the 
um, deal is on item source. It's been a while since I've used that and I need to use item source on the list box. And so a uh, part of that involves identifying what field value, what is the name of the field in the list of uh, rows, in the list of collection items um, that the the intended item, the intended item source collection is going to um, refer to, right? So the, the list box is what you would classify as an item source control. And using the WPF system, it uses the, uh, there's, a, there's a thing called dependency properties. And so to be a legitimate dependency prop property, you have to be a, um, a field value that's declared public. And so as long as we have that going for us, um, everything's going to be all right. So I've identified the uh, field value as headline text, right? That is going to be the, the, the item to display on the screen. Um, but we do have an, an issue here where um, we're trying to pull data from the database and the, the row date time that we're pulling back um, as a string doesn't convert directly to a string. And so I'm using the get string method off of the data reader. And I'm going to switch that to get value. Because in this version of .NET, we have an advantage that wasn't uh, so that we didn't have in earlier versions of .NET. String interpolation, um, I found, is a very convenient way to um, work around uh, some of the, the type conversion issues um, involving strings. And so I'm going to use string interpolation. And that means I don't have to change any of the rest of my code. I can simply use the appropriate generic method here. And now the code runs. So I have the tabs. And there's that's definitely a list box there. Because remember, the background color was previously orange. And the list box default background color is white. So we have a list box there. But now we need to populate it with data. We have the right function in place, but there is a, a logic bug that exists in the data access layer. The user interface is fine at this point. There's a small little tweak that needs to be made there. But identifying the issue requires that we set a few breakpoints so that we can understand where we are. So I hovered my mouse over the line of code where it stopped to uh, examine the feed name and it showed that there were zero items in the collection. So I realized that I was bringing back the data into program memory and then trying to saturate a collection with the data, but I did not set up the downstream uh, collection uh, to actually have an instance of a collection, right? So I have this uh, associative array and the, the name value pair uh, relationship where the value side was uh, to be a collection did not have anything in there. So this corrects that. The final four videos in this series will build off of the data binding and database infrastructure established to produce a more refined version of the program we have today.